What's going on, everybody? For USA Muay Thai, my name's Nate Freeman. I'm joined today by the man who will be representing us in the 75-kilo division um, in the IFMA Senior World Championships, Anthony Schleicher. Anthony, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Um, we're excited to have you on the team for the first time. Um, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, tell me a little bit about um, who you are and um, how you came into the sport of Muay Thai, the sport of kickboxing. I know you have a background in kickboxing as well. Um, so yeah, just tell me how you got into martial arts. Yeah, I started, um, I was a fan of like the UFC when I was in middle school. And um, then when I got into high school, there was a wrestling coach that started an MMA club at my high school. And uh, yeah, shout out Mr. Mefford. He got us started and we would just be training, like rolling a lot. It was a lot of like jujitsu, like kind of basic uh, boxing. And then we would like spar and roll a lot. And that was kind of like my introduction to, to martial arts. And I did that all throughout high school, but I didn't actually compete. I wasn't joining a gym. So it wasn't until I went to college and I um, found a, a kickboxing gym. And I started training in primarily kickboxing. Even if I was training in Muay Thai, I wasn't full rules Muay Thai, so it was still pretty much kickboxing. And um, yeah, and then I didn't really have intentions of taking it super far. I just kind of wanted to train. But I ended up, after I joined that first gym, I took my first fight in probably less than six months. And then I just, just kept going and I just realized I just kept showing up to the gym every day. Like, I obviously must like this. So, um, so then I just like slowly, slowly started taking it more seriously and yeah, here we are. Awesome. Well, we're, um, happy that you've made this journey into Muay Thai and kickboxing. Um, let's talk a little bit about your experience at the USA Muay Thai Grand Nationals. Um, you made it to the finals, defeated Brandon Dreyer, um, in the finals. Talk to me about how you, um, experienced the Grand Nationals and, um, your thoughts on the tournament and the whole experience there. It was great. Like, it was one of my favorite tournaments, um, just from how smooth everything ran and also, like, the consistency and the judging. And, um, yeah, it was just, like, it just felt like it made sense. Like, sometimes you'll go to tournaments and, you know, just sometimes you'll have experiences where it's kind of, like, inconsistent and and you wouldn't really understand it but it seemed like everything really made sense and like from how muay thai is supposed to be scored and how people are damage oriented control dominance oriented and then like you would look at a fight and be like okay i think this guy was the person or this girl was the person who uh, was dominating and doing more damage and that would be the person who won the fight and so it was cool. And then the open scoring was really cool. I'd never had an open scoring in Muay Thai. We'd have that in kickboxing, but not in Muay Thai. So having that open scoring was was nice, um, especially just for like navigating the rounds and knowing like, okay, either got to turn it up this third round, it's one-on-one or we're ahead, let's like put them away. You know, either way we're trying to finish fights, but like it's, it is just nice to see that uh, open scoring. Yeah, yeah, I know. I appreciate it as well. Um, so we can know, yeah, like you said, when to push, when to um, not necessarily let off the gas, but push for a finish um, either way. So, yeah, I think that is a great aspect of um, the EFMA scoring system. Um, and I know that you have some big goals for this year, not only in uh, USA Muay Thai. Obviously, you're competing in the um, world championships here in about a month. Um, but you also are on the um, Waco um, kickboxing team as well. You were on the team last year and earned a bronze medal in the world championships. Um, and you're also competing for them this year, um, later on in the year. So um, you have some pretty lofty goals for the year. Let's hear um, sort of about your experience going between both sports um, for this year and hopefully in the future as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like inspired by one and how they got these kickboxing and Muay Thai champions. And it's like uh, sometimes culturally people try to draw a huge line between kickboxing and Muay Thai and act like, you know, it's just like a totally different thing. But I mean, I think they complement each other. And I think that if you have a common goal of just like being the best fighter you can be, 
you're gonna know how to like fight in a certain like a certain situation and then also like me and my coach we always talk about that any place anywhere any rule set mindset like i'm gonna beat you wherever whatever we're doing like we could be doing karate i'm gonna beat you we could be doing boxing i'm gonna beat you we could do taekwondo i'm gonna beat you we could do mma i'm gonna beat you it's just like anything we're doing if it's fighting i should be able to get in there and be my best and adapt to whatever is the focus and get the win and that makes me like a more complete fighter and uh and so Waco added a lot to my style, the volume, the pace, um, the emphasis on clean technique, uh, creativity, you know, a lot of stuff like that. And it translated into Muay Thai. I was always like a damage oriented fighter. Like I always wanted to hurt people, knock people out. And um, so Muay Thai like vibed with me like more naturally. But then the Waco made me a better fighter too in Muay Thai. So I benefit from from focusing on whatever the rule set is at the time. And I feel like it just it just opens me up and makes me a better fighter for both as I just kind of keep competing. Yeah, and you've been staying active. You I think I heard you say you had 10 fights last year. Um you're gonna have even more this year, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned one championship, and um, Rich Franklin was in attendance at the Grand Nationals. Did you get, get a chance to meet him, speak with him, anything like that? I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but I heard him talk when he was uh, giving his his speech uh, in between the finals or the semifinals. But yeah, that's yeah, that's that's what it's all about. I was really inspired by that, and it was cool that they were already kind of just showing that a lot of the American talent is people that they're looking at from U.S. Muay Thai for, for one. And that was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's something we're really excited about. We've got some USA Muay Thai alumni in one championship, and we're hoping to grow that relationship um, even further in the near future. Um, but I'd love to hear some things that, um, obviously not specific things because we don't want to give away any game plans or anything like that, but um, some things that you're working on in the gym right now to become a better, more well-rounded uh, Muay Thai athlete and a better uh, martial artist overall. Mm, um, smart aggression, you know, smart aggression. Like with the, uh, with the IFMA, we, you know, we study the way that the, the IFMA, this is my first time being in an IFMA, uh, going to IFMA. So um, just kind of been studying how they like to score and, uh, kickboxing, a lot of mobility, staying on the outside. Muay Thai, they want you walking forward, walking forward, dominating. If you're going to move, you you got to have scored some damage first, and you're really just making the miss, and then you're right back on them again. It's not like you're just supposed to be like sticking and moving and then going in a circle. If you're going to do that, you better knock them out. So that's kind of what we've been working is just like taking the sensibilities of, you know, good movement and all this like sharp technique and stuff, but still being like aggressive as possible. So yeah. without being, you know, without compromising technique and, you know, not just being stupid and just walking forward, getting hit, but being aggressive intelligently. Overall, what does it mean to you to um, not only represent USA Muay Thai, but represent, um, the country on the world stage, um, putting the flag on your back. And, um, like I said, mentioned, uh, repping USA on the world stage. It's cool. Like, I, like, like you mentioned, I, I've done it with, um, Waco and represented the USA overseas. And, and I remember, um, it's, it's interesting. It's like, it's like the healthiest <laughs> like version of, of that kind of nationalism. Cause like you get to talk to other people from other countries and maybe in the media, that country, you would think like, oh, there would be more of a riff or something as if me and this athlete from Turkey or something are gonna have an, uh, an issue because of the government politics or something. And you kind of, it's kind of cool. Cause it's like, you get to really interact with people who are representing their country but they're representing like themselves too and they're and they're representing their experience of their country and like and uh so it's like the most healthiest slash accurate perception of what it what 
all these different people from all these different places are about. And I think it's cool that I get to represent the United States and then people get to kind of like, well, it, whoever meets me, whoever I meet, we get to see each other and be like, oh man, I thought the US was like this, but this dude is pretty cool. Or, or I thought that country was like that, but he's got an open mind towards this subject. I didn't think they would have an open mind towards that subject. Or I didn't think they would, you know, do things like this. So I, I just think it's amazing and it and it helps to like build uh, a healthier understanding of the world. Yeah, absolutely. That that makes perfect sense. And um, yeah, it really is cool to see um, when I've been to these international competitions to see um, people from what from the layperson would seem like two rival countries, um, non-athletically or whatever, um, being friends and just sharing a love for martial arts on the world stage. Yeah, I think that's just really awesome. Um, but I want to shift gears a little bit um, because when I did a little bit of research on you beforehand, um, I saw a lot of your artwork coming up. So you do a lot of um, visual art. Um, tell me where that passion and talent came from and um, what you are doing with that at the moment. Yeah, I've been a visual artist my whole life. I, I like to say I've been me my whole life. Like I, I really been kind of interested in what I am doing now since I was as early as I can remember. I was first day of school is in my mind, like kindergarten. First thing I was doing was making art, you know, which is probably true for a lot of kids. Like a lot of kids are artists when they're kids and then they just kind of lose it somewhere along the way. But I just never lost it. Like I just stayed, um, stayed with it. Similar to the gym, like every day I just kept showing up to the gym until I'm like, wait, this is what I'm, this is what I love. Like, this is what I do. And it was similar to drawing. I would always get in trouble in class, drawing, painting, messing up my worksheets, just always drawing all over them, getting in trouble. And I just never stopped. It was just like, got to do it. So, um, so yeah, I ended up going to school. That's, that's what I got my education in. I went and uh, got a BFA and, um, and that's kind of like, um, uh, those are like the two sides of what I like to do with my day to day. You know, I do murals, I do oil paint. Um, I even like to get into multidisciplinary stuff. So I like to get into sculpture, film, photography, but primarily I do um, illustration, murals, painting, stuff like that. And I see that a lot of the themes are um, about sort of African um, themes and your middle name is Olesina. Is that how you say it? Olesina. Olesina. Um, yeah. And I assume that that, I don't want to be presumptuous, but that does yeah. seem like yeah. an African um, sort of background yeah. name. Um, so tell me about um, your history there with your family, I assume. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my mom is from Nigeria. My mom's a Nigerian immigrant. So, you know, she's Yoruba, uh, Olesina. Oluwashina is a is a Yoruba name, means God opens the way. Pretty pretty common name in, in Nigeria. And um and yeah, so that art, a lot of my art that I have put out, like made available on social media, have done shows as with the last couple of years, maybe two, three years, was a lot on like cultural identity. My dad is, you know, white American. He's uh, you know. We call him a European mutt. He's got a lot of different, uh, you know, the name Schleicher is, a, is an Austrian name. So, yeah, so, so I, I had a phase of art where I was just talking about cultural identity and like how a lot of aspects of cultural identity are things that people take for granted. It's, it's another kind of interesting thing about being American anyway, because a lot of different people in America have, have this like trait to some extent, like even if they identify as being black but they you look in their genealogy it's going to be a lot of mix half the time whether it's native american whether it's you know european down the line you know different tribes maybe uh caribbean identity mixed in with something else so it's it's a lot of mixing going on in america whether or not people are super aware of it and i was just making a lot of art that was kind of talking about just like african diaspora and different cultural identities and like what we even hold on to when we when we say i am this and like what does that even mean like 
you know, so it's it's a it's a it's a whole thing. And in my art, I like identity. I like conscious identity. I like personal identity. And it even gets into like, who are you as a person? Are you even your body, or are you like your consciousness, or like what even is that? And I and I like that. I like investigating that. You know. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so there's, I would imagine there's a lot of parallels between being an artist and a martial artist as the name suggests um can you explore that a little bit and talk about um like you mentioned you said there's two sides to you sort of that martial artist side and that visual artist side um can you expound on those uh parallels a little bit more yeah i mean i think the most obvious connection is probably um just self-expression like you get to express yourself and get to be creative i mean martial arts is i feel like all about creativity and like um it's what's so cool like you could fight somebody and you feel like you know them better than maybe you could ever have known them from having a conversation you know just because you got to really see like themselves expressed in a very specific circumstance but that it, it kind of is very telling like how they deal with pressure how they deal with fatigue how they how they deal with uh getting hurt or adversity or whatever so i think that's um the most obvious connection, like just that ability to express. But then, I mean, there's also like, like any art, you have to learn how to like do the thing, like how to how to work the medium. So like if you if you play piano or something, and you don't know anything about piano, you can't ever express yourself. You don't even know what keys comprise a you know a, a sad song or a happy song, you would never be able to actually like get the feeling out because you don't know how to use the medium. And that's how I feel about fighting is like, you might have all this in your heart that you wanna express when you get into the ring, but if you didn't, if you weren't labbing in the gym and sharpening your tools and, and learning and mastering the medium, you won't even be able to show your heart when you get into the ring and people won't even really be able to see who you are. They're just, you know, so it's like an earned, privilege to be able to get into like you know the heat of battle or whatever and really be able to show like who you are it's something you gotta earn even though everybody has a degree of that inside of them i believe like that warrior or whatever or just like the ability to overcome adversity people do it in all different facets of life but when you're talking about the art and the ability to express yourself it's like i have to practice my painting i have to practice the drawing we have to do endless figure classes you know whatever color theory you got to do a lot of stuff and it's similar to fighting. You have to really train hard just to get the privilege to to show like what's up with you and what's up with your emotions, what's up with your mental state, and like get to show who you are. You know, show the world. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so we're gonna shift gears a little bit and do a few rapid fire questions for fans to get to know you just a little bit better, um, more on the personal side. Um, first and foremost, what is your favorite striking technique? Right now, it's got to be elbows. <laughs> I'm falling in love with the elbows. They're just so they're just so devastating. So yeah, yeah. Um, your favorite um, Muay Thai athlete? Oh, it's basic, but Senchai. Classic, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong there. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah. Um, how about your favorite? You said you grew up watching UFC. Who was your favorite UFC athlete growing up? Growing up, and Rampage who is it today? Growing up, it was Rampage. Rampage okay. Jackson. That was my favorite. And then now, ooh, right now, probably Alex Pereira. Yeah, the, I've been following him shot. since kickboxing, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, your favorite athlete outside of combat sports? Uh, like active or just in general? Of all time. Of yeah. all time? Um, I'm going to say Barry Sanders. Okay. Yeah. That's not what I'm used to hearing, but he yeah. incredible athlete running back. Crazy um, athlete. Like, like he, he inspires me from like an athlete perspective. Like when I, when I look at him, I'm like, Ooh, I want to be like that guy. Yeah. Yeah, and always love his uh, touchdown celebration 
meaning there was no touchdown celebration. He just handed the ball to the ref like he'd been there. Yeah, there. Next. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that, I, I really appreciate him as an athlete as well. Um, your favorite either book or movie? My favorite movie is The Matrix. Okay. Uh, favorite book? Oh, I'm reading a book right now, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, your favorite meal for maybe post-fight celebration um, or maybe your um, guilty pleasure meal. Um, mm. Some people may call it a death row meal, like your last meal before, you know. What um, What is your go-to food? I, okay, so celebration meal slash guilty pleasure meal same thing definitely ice cream uh, important yeah. important qualifier though what uh what flavor oh yes okay so i gotta get this right um like day to day it's uh cookies and cream that's like my day to day flavor. And then if I if I'm going for like when I'm literally like my guilty pleasure one is it's this brand of ice cream called Jenny's. Yes. This flavor Jenny's. gooey butter cake. Mm. Man. That's the one. Jenny's. <laughs> I there's one just a few minutes away from where I live and it is so tempting every time so dangerous um, it, it's dangerous so <laughs> i um i try to not take the route that goes by the jenny's <laughs> when i when i go out just so i'm not tempted but jenny's is so good um and if you don't have one in your town i'm sorry um yeah it's <laughs> incredible <laughs> um and good shout on the cookies and cream too i think that um of all the i don't i don't want to call it basic flavors but yeah um, of all the sort of most recognizable flavors, I, I think that's the best as well. Um, shifting gears on a more serious tone, though, what advice would you give to yourself um, as you were just getting started in martial arts? And um, what advice would you give, if it's any different, to um, anyone in general just getting started in martial arts? Mm. That is a tough one. Um... I would say don't waste time slash don't waste reps. That would probably be the, the best advice I could give that I feel like I would have understood. Like, don't do no sloppy reps and don't, don't, don't like settle at a certain point unless, unless that's literally your goal. Like that's, that's all you were trying to do. But like, keep pushing, keep getting better, and like always take every rep super serious. Yeah. 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 Always. Um, yeah. Take every rep serious and um, yeah, that builds good habits. So that's perfect. Um, before I let you go, there are three things that I want to hear from you. One, um, I want to give you the floor to give any shout outs to coaches um, anything like that, gym, friends, whatever. Um, two, um, if you're doing a fundraiser or something, uh, for going to Greece, um, shout that out and let us know how we can support you. And three, how can people follow you on social media? How can people see more of your artwork and, um, all that? Yeah. Dope. Okay. So first and foremost, shout out to Power Gym Chicago. That's where I train. Uh, shout out my head coach, Austin Lewis, the man. Uh, shout out all my team. Shout out my nutritionist, MMA doc. Shout out, uh, yeah. That's probably everyone right now. Okay, but shout out my team, though. It's a lot of y'all to mention. I'm sorry. But, yeah, shout out everybody that's trans with me. Um, my Instagram is a good one-stop shop for my – in the bio is the link to the GoFundMe that we're doing. Um, now, yeah, for this, for IFMA trip, also just for all the international trips, we got a few lined up over the next just years. So, and, um, yeah, so we're just going to keep it going, keep it rolling. Um, OLU 
underscore underscore S I N A is my uh, Instagram handle. And then also in that link is a, I mean, in the bio is a, is a link to my art page, which is just Olushina art. Uh, and that's where you can stay up to date with like all the different things, you know, solo shows, group shows, murals that I've done, uh, community projects that I work on and stuff like that. So, yeah. Awesome. This has been Anthony Schleicher. Um, once again, you can catch him competing in the 75 kilo division at the Ethno World Championships representing USA Muay Thai. Anthony, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck in the tournament and let us know how we can be supporting you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.